Thanks everyone for coming to my talk. So today I want to talk about reactive motion planning with probabilistic safety guarantee. Uh, so it is our observation that humans are incredibly good at reacting to the environment when we drive. So this is an intersection in Africa where there's no traffic lights, but people still manage to avoid most of the collision. But uh, it, it, it seems that it's very, it, on the other hand, it's a very hard job for the autonomous driving vehicle. For example, this is a footage of Tesla trying to exit the highway. But because of this black vehicle here, it's kind of overreacting and then it's being overly cautious that eventually missed the, the highway exit, which should be easy for a human driver. Uh, so last year, we actually started working on this problem. And this is our previous paper, uh, also in, the, in Coral last year, that uses uh, falsification tools and also SVM to gradually remove uh, the, input, the input space, the pieces of input space, space that are dangerous and also unrealistic. And eventually, we're able to get a uh, mapping that maps the scenario to a set of possible actions. But the problem with this approach is that it's giving us instantaneous prediction, which are hard to use in motion planning because motion planning typically uses a, a finite horizon. So to do this, this year, we extend our previous work to uh, aiming at a, tra tra a trajectory predictor. And the first step we do is to uh, find a trajectory basis to cover all the possible trajectories because now that we, with this trajectory basis, we don't have to deal with the infinite dimensional space of all the trajectories. And this is done by a trajectory falsification, uh, sparsification procedure utilizing the submodularity of this set cover problem. And then this is the 17 basis trajectories that we distilled from the 140,000 trajectories from the NGSIM database. Um, and then we use affordance vector as a compact and permutation invariant representation of the scenario. So basically we record all these distance um, that are independent of how you order the adjacent vehicles, which is a huge advantage for training. Uh, and th this is fed to a feed-forward neural network that gives us this trajectory prediction. So this is the uh, demonstration with the NGSync database and, and the red trajectories are the one that deemed possible by the trajectory predictor. Uh, but in order to guarantee safety, we have to bound the false negative rate because a false negative means that some trajectory that is possible was deemed impossible by the trajectory predictor. So you might add, uh, act, uh, you know, uh, boldly, and then eventually it, would, it might lead to a crash. So we use one assumption that is the data points are sampled identically and independently from the nominal distribution. But we don't assume anything about the distribution itself. So it can be Gaussian, it can be something else. We don't say anything about that. Uh, and with that, we propose a post bloating scheme that uses the RCP theory. So basically, we, we prove that the the, uh, the upper bound of the uh, false negative is proportional to one over n, where n is the number of agents, sorry, is the number of uh, data points you use to, to train your, your model. And this is because uh, basically the RCP theory says that every data point you use generates uh, convex constraints. And then as you add more and more convex constraints, your current solution satisfying all the existing convex constraints will have a very high probability of satisfying a newly added convex constraint from the same distribution. Um, and indeed, we compare the RCP predicted uh, upper bound with the empirical false negative rate. And you can see that the empirical rate is always below the upper bound predicted by our RCP. And we also have other options in, this, in the paper, for example, SVM and also conformal analysis. And you can check the paper for more details. So now that we have a reliable uh, trajectory predictor, we use mo uh, model predictor control for the uh, trajectory planning. So the model predictor control is solving a finite uh, horizon optimization problem in every time step, where this is the constraint that says the vehicle has to avoid all the uh, possible trajectories by other vehicles, which is given by the trajectory predictor. And this, these are several uh, snapshots of the MPC where the, the red trajectories are the ones that are predicted by the trajectory predictor. And then the blue one is the trajectory that is, um, uh, that is given by the MPC under the optimization. And the MPC is solved with sequential credential programming so that it can be solved in real time. And also we use slack variables to avoid infeasibility. Here are some simulations uh, using the MPC. And these uh, blue vehicles are uncontrolled vehicles that are generated randomly following a random degenerated uh, trajectory, and the MPC is able to avoid collision with them. Um, and with that, uh, I'd like to thank everyone again, uh, and happy to take questions.